Hi, my name is Jerry, and I'd like to introduce to you the Kinetic Energy Recovery System. So ever since the dawn of the automobile, people have tried to make it faster and more powerful, making it more effective to get from point A to B and able to carry heavier loads. I guess Goose said it best in the movie Top Gun. I feel the need, the need for speed. But in modern times, engines are not only required to be powerful, they are also required to be more efficient. Regulations and public perceptions on fossil fuels means that the more consuming that the engine is, the more negatively perceived it is. Basically, humankind is producing too much greenhouse gases, which is contributing to climate change. And in order to cut down, the hybrid movement is gaining traction. Vehicles with electric motors and that save fuel are being heralded as the new age of automotive transportation. So today I'd like to talk about the kinetic energy system. The kinetic energy recovery system, or KERS, it is a way to capture the wasted energy in a car, whether it is through the brake, the heat from the brakes, or the heat from the exhaust. The kinetic energy recovery system comes from the pinnacle of motorsport racing, the Formula One and LMP1, Le Mans prototype. These races are the forefront of technological advancement. In a race, the obvious factors at play are speed, acceleration, downforce, and weight. How does the curve system factor into this? The curve system mainly can provide a boost of power and increased acceleration. How does it do it? The current system gets energy from the braking forces which converts the rotational energy into kinetic energy into electric energy and is stored in either a flywheel or a battery. There are two current systems. The one that I just mentioned is called the MGUK or the motor slash generator unit kinetic. There's also an MGUH, the motor slash generator heat. The heat motor generator is to capture the heat from the exhaust gases as they exit the vehicle. There's a turbine in the exhaust which spins and converts the rotational energy into electric energy. These are stored for use later. How it is activated? the driver pushes a button on the steering wheel which allows for the MGUK, the kinetic one, to exert a force down the drive shaft into the wheels, the reverse of how it collects the energy. And the MGUH, it activates by increasing the speed as the turbine rotates, which spools the turbo faster to account for turbo lag. So how do these things translate to consumer benefit? While the MGUK is not practical for consumer cars because the system relies on flywheels which spin very quickly and reliability, safety, and noise are all issues, but the MGUH is quite practical because a consumer vehicle, like a race vehicle, has exhaust gases and energy can be harnessed from there. Another way the MGUK system can be used in cars is in regenerative braking where the energy recovered from braking is saved into a lithium-ion battery pack. This is already evident in cars such as the Tesla Model S or the Toyota Prius. So with these regulations enforced on racing teams and manufacturers forced to technologically advance for more efficient engines without sacrificing for power and performance, this results in a win-win for everyone, be it race fans who have the need for speed or consumers who want efficient cars. All in all, the mechanical engineering and the current system, as well as motorsport, pushing for more efficiency, it's reducing the impact that vehicles have with burning their fossil fuels on the environment. Thanks for watching.